be in this uh, hot weather. Three, two, one, action. Greetings, fellow Decepticons. Uh, Blaster1987 here with my review of the SMP Super Mini Flat or Shokugan Modeling Project Gal King, aka the Wild Force Megazord. As you can see, here we have all five of the Wild Zords Tiger, Lion, Shark, Eagle, and Bison in their animal notes. I don't have a DX version for comparison at this point, unfortunately. You'll have to wait till I acquire one and review it to see them side by side. But what I do have for comparison is a DX build brusher from Tokuja from my previous Tokusatsu review. Laser beam from the Transformers animated Sandwave set. As you can see, he's about twice the size of the Eagle Zord. Minicon Ratbat from Robots in Disguise 2015 in his uh, torpedo mode. I'll be reviewing him another time. Just give me a sec to pop this back into place. And animate the sound wave for a final comparison in this mode. As you can see, sound wave is about as bulky as the bison zord, but wider. So, there are two combination abilities for this set. But first of all, we'll go through the articulation of each individual component, shall we? Starting with the big one, the bison zord belonging to the Black Ranger, Gal Bison. The horns can be repositioned. There's a swivel and a hinge at the neck, although it does pop this panel off, so you have to be really careful with how you move it. And if you get your nail underneath it, the mouth can open. And also the legs can move a little bit forward and back for transformation. The front legs are on slided rail joints for the way they transform, so you'll have to be careful how those move, otherwise you'll break something. Next, the Yellow Ranger's Eagle Zord, Gown Eagle. The head can move up and down, the beak opens. And there's multiple different hinges and swivels at the wings for up and down, left and right, in and out movement. The legs can swivel around and there's a sideways swivel at the ankle, as well as the talons being able to open and shut, like a real eagle. And also the yeah, tail feathers are supposed to be the Megazord head, so they've got plenty of motion as well. Next, the Shark Zord. Mouth opens. And there's a panel in the roof of the mouth that hinges out to reveal the yeah, port to put the sword in in robot mode. I'll keep this out for the sake of simplicity because it takes a while to get out with short nails. Then you've got sideways movement for making it look like it's swimming in stop motion. Also part of the elbow for transformation. And the side fins can move up and down. Next, the White Ranger's Tiger Zord. Hand is on a ball joint. For Minor movement as uh, the hand is supposed to also be the hand for the left arm. Mouth opens. Slight forward and back movement of the shoulders, limited due to the yeah, armor kibble around it. Plus uh, sort of an elbow or knee joint, whatever you want to call it. And an uh, up and down hinge at the wrist or the ankle. Some mid-torso joints for leaping poses. This here is also a bicep swivel for the robot, so don't be confused with tiger articulation on that one. The tail can hinge up and down. The back legs are more or less fused because of the way the shoulder panel works. But you get a double jointed knee at the back and another uh, one-way hinge at the ankle. And finally, with the Red Ranger's Lion Zord, the mouth opens, and there's uh, 
quite a few hinges and swivels here. The paws are on the individual ball joints and the rest of the legs are hinged for transformation. And also the yeah, tail can move up and down. So, to begin transforming these Wild Force Zords into the yeah, Wild Force Megazord, first of all, what you want to do is crack the Bison Zord open like an egg. Like so. Then, double extend this assembly like so. Come to the underside, fold out these wheels. Then, flip up the Bison legs to become more wheels. Close these panels on the bison's back, then open these ones out like so. Come to the underside, gently pull out the front legs of the sliding round mechanisms to give you more clearance to hinge them into position. So, then with the eagle sword, make sure that you stand it up in such a way that the tail feathers here can tuck into this gap in the bison sword, like so. Then put the lion sword tail down and stand it in front of the eagle sword. Then just gently balance the shark and tiger swords on the back of the bison like so. This is the Wild Force Megazord carrier configuration. I've only seen in a few episodes and it's not very stable because nothing actually clips together. So to combine into the actual Megazord configuration from this point, Snap the bison open again, bring these panels in like so, and then those panels in, same on both sides. Then bring these uh, wheel panels in on themselves. And bring this panel up, but leave this part inside. Close the bison's back panels again. Split the legs. Then rotate this piece diagonally so that the bison head is facing forwards on the waist of the Megazord, like so. Then use the hinge at the back of the bison's head to bring the bison head downwards. Leave these wheels as part of the kneecaps because that's part of the design. Then use the sliding rails to flip the other bison man legs, the front bison legs, into position so that these bits become the feet. Same on both sides. And now you've got the bison's sword as a pair of legs. Next, what you want to do is you want to fold down the lion's or tail, if you haven't already, from a carrier mode. Then fold the front hinges and bring the lion's or front legs up, out of the way. Like so. This might take a second, these parts are still a bit stiff. Then you want to hinge the lion back legs up out of the way. Basically this is the way you want the lion's or's legs configured at this point. 
then you want to bring the lion zord's head forward slightly so it's going to gap in the mane and push this gold panel over top of the mane downwards to make a dent for the eagle zord to fit into. So same on both sides with the lion legs. Might be easier to fold the back legs up first so as you can't clear into the front legs. Apologies, bear with me. Short nails and complex designs do not mix well. I need to jump cut here because this camera can only film for 10 minutes at a time, so in a moment. One action. Once you've got all the lion's odd legs situated correctly, you want to attach this peg hole on the underside of the lion here to this peg on top of the bison, like so. Can be a bit tricky sometimes because these model kits have a lot of friction between peg joints, so bear with me. So once that's in place, you want to take the tail off the shark zord, pull and extend to reveal the elbow joint, then rotate this piece 180 degrees, actually no, just 90 degrees, so the wrist panel is facing forward and the shark head is facing sideways. Then fold the fins under it, underneath it and put this longer separate part to the fin blade sword in the hand like so. Then use this hole here to attach to this shoulder piece. Then for the tiger's oars, what you need to do is tear off the front legs, hinge them in on themselves so that they're folded away, and then reattach them. Because there's not enough actual parts clearance for the yeah, pieces to just hinge around the same way that they do on the deluxe toy. You'll have to wait till I actually own that figure for comparison because it's a bit inconvenient to be reviewing the model kit without having the original toy by its side, I have to admit. So, same on both sides. Hinge the front legs in on themselves. And reattach them. Then what you want to do is you want to separate the rear legs ever so slightly so there's enough of a gap to fit the tail through before putting them back together. Like so. Then fold the tail all the way through like this. Then bring the legs in on themselves and tuck them inside themselves like so. Then bring the silver shoulder panel over and slot it back together, like so. Next, pull and extend the elbow and make sure that the tiger head is pointing this way so its open mouth can be the other hand. Attach to the other shoulder joint, like so. And finally, the eagle zord, which forms the head. So, to attach the eagle to the lion, first of all, what you want to do is get the eagle situated like this, so that the legs are back and the tail is coming up like so. Then, fold the wings forward and point them downward, so they'll go into the slot in the lion's mane to fill it out more with the gold detailing. Then, Make sure that the legs are up, out of the way. Then the eagle head is specifically molded to fit into this groove on the top of the lion's mane, like so. Then 
There's two little bumps on the inside of the shoulder panels where these holes in the eagle's or hips will fit to further lock things into position. You may want to shut the tower so they don't get stuck. Once that's locked into place, slot the wings into the lion's mane to finish the lion mane details. Oops. Because this is a model kit, parts have a higher tendency to pop off their joints than there on the original DX figure. Apologies about that, fellow Decepticons. So, hopefully, nothing else goes wrong this time. So, attach it to position. Eagle wings slot into lion mane to complete the look. Then finally bring up the bison horns again and rotate the head forward. But first, bring, whoops, bring the helmet up sideways and then down again to reveal one of two possible faces for the Megazord. So, here we finally have the Wild Force Megazord in its robot mode. For size comparison, here we have it with Tokyo DX build IO, so you can see the comparison between a Super Mini Fly model kit and the original DX Megazord designs. And here it is with animated deluxe sound wave to whom it is actually accurately scaled more or less. Being a model kit full of ball joints, hinges and swivels, this is actually a lot more poseable than its DX counterpart. So, for example, you've got a ball joint at the neck, for then plenty of movement and 360 degree swivelling. You've got a butterfly joint at the shoulders for forward movement, a swivel at both arms for up and down movement, Bicep swivel on a tiger sword, double jointed elbows, a wrist swivel on the tiger sword, slightly less movement on the shark sword because of the way the head's put together, but it's still a double jointed elbow and such like. And of course, you can rotate the fin blade sword slightly in the hold in the hand. Because of the way the legs are put together, there's also a slight extension in the hips for further forward movement. Most likely extending hip stem on older SH figure marks figures. There's also a very deep knee bend due to the way these panels fold in on themselves. And there's a, yeah, Fly swivel at the hip peg as well as outward movement, so you can get some pretty dynamic poses out of this version of the Megazord, I can tell you that much. Still not stable due to the fact that the yeah, Bison Zord's not got the best footprint for dynamic poses with the sword, but you can approximate a few things. So, that concludes my review of the Shokugan Modeling Project Gao King Wild Force Megazord Kit. At the time of this recording, Gao Hunter has only just been revealed and Gao Muscle has not been released yet, so I won't be able to review those kits for a while, but they are cross compatible with the way the parts are engineered, so stay tuned for future reviews to see those. 
Until then, I've been Sandblaster1987. Join me next time when I will be reviewing Transformers Animated, Soundwave and Laserbeak. Till then, till all are one, and may the power protect you, always.